Hello. Um, I hope that uh, you can hear me. Um, let's see. I'm going to turn off the monitor so I don't hear my own echo. Okay. Uh, so now I have some ambient fire crackles in the background. Um, I hope that's cool with everybody. I um, recorded a... Uh, it took my field recorder uh, to a fire um, the other day and um, recorded some fire sounds and then I uh, I took that and um, I've been running it through the modular and that's sort of the the, the background music that you that you just heard um, so big props to the morphogene um, the module on the left for doing that uh, we're today's topic is your rack, <laughs> um, so we're gonna get really into we're gonna get into all of that. Uh, but first, I would like to yo. Good to see both uh, Emma Cat fifty five and T Wonku. Uh, thanks for joining. This is gonna be a fun one, so feel free to participate uh, in any way. Um, if y'all would like, um, I will join a uh, hangout. Um, uh, just just let me know that you're on the on the hangout. Um, my voice is gonna be on it, but uh, um, I won't know that anyone's there unless you unless you let me know in the chat. So if you're interested in like, you know, having a discussion or like if you wanna if you wanna uh, contribute something. Verbally, um, the I uh, have the Discord set up to do that. Um, things are going much smoother, uh, you know, on third, third or fourth try uh, with this with this sort of thing. So, um, let me switch here. Uh, one second. Uh, there's always going to be some bugs. Um, okay, so this one is a uh, video capture device 2. So I'm going to add that real quick as we get started. Okay. Um, so now hopefully everyone can see uh, me in uh, big, big mode. <laughs> you can see me up close a little bit better. Um, okay, now that that's, uh, I wanted to talk uh, briefly about some of the updates for Control AV. Um, I recently set up a Calendly, and um, that is so that you don't have to go through me in order to schedule a stream. Um, all you have to do is go to, uh, I'm going to type it into the chat. Uh, Calendly.com slash uh, control AV. Oh, thanks. I love my headphones. Um, and if you go to this website, uh, you you can you can uh, schedule uh, a stream, and you can either choose a performance, a s group stream, or a solo stream. And that is going to depending on what you pick, it will just give you a different color on the Google Calendar. There's no like real difference between any, any of them. It's just that like uh, it, it provides a nice color coding um, on the Google Calendar. And then you can add that Google Calendar to um, the calendar that you see so you know when the stream is coming. You can uh, add notifications, be like, hey, you know, someone's streaming at this time. I'm not, I don't want to miss that. So yeah, I get notifications. And uh, it's integrated with Twitch so that um, whenever you sign up to stream, uh, that will be added to the Twitch ex Google Calendar extension, which I found out about uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but I think I still have to manually add it to the schedule. Um, and if once you sign up, I will get your email that you want to use, or if you're new, like I'll give you uh, the the email. Um, and then from that email, I can send you 
the 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 uh, stream the um <laughs> the stream code so you can stream to the channel uh, without having to change anything and then we can have like a correspondence where he's like oh what's the title what's the description and i can set that up for you um and that way you don't have to log into the account uh you can just stream directly to the channel and everything's already taken care of for you um so it's designed so that it's easy as possible to uh, make a community uh, Twitch stream happen. Um, and if there's any, uh, if you have any notes on any of that, or if an, is anything that you would rather change, or anything you don't like about that, uh, feel free to let me know. And um, or if you have a suggestion about how to streamline uh, the sign up and stream, uh, uh, you know, rehearsal process. Um, I don't have uh, baked in a, like a rehearsal process yet. Um, but that is definitely something that I want to provide for those who are very new to streaming and say like, hey, let's schedule a time where we can just uh, a practice, practice streaming for a minute and then you'll be ready for uh, the channel or w whatever, whatever, whatever works for people. I'm not sure if that's a need yet. Um, I assumed it would, but maybe it's not. So we'll see. Uh, the next, the next thing. Um, oh, I guess to say, uh, there's not a lot. Um, we don't have a lot planned <laughs> uh, in the in the future. So, if there's any any ideas that you have, that you want any kind of events that you want to have, uh, any live streams that you want to do, any collaborations that you want to have, and uh, let's tr let's try to get those scheduled and set some dates. Um, whether that's like this month or it's next month or it's like six months in the future, right? Uh, it's good to have some goals and it's good to have some direction. And so if you have any ideas on where you want to go uh, and what you want to do with, uh, w with, this, with this channel or wor in, in any, of the, any of those things, um, feel free to you know, post the Discord or um, post in the chat right now. Um, oh, I also have the chat bot running, so there's a few uh, commands available. Um, I have uh, the chat bot running, which lets you uh, submit a few, a few different, a few different commands. Um, not all the, the the title ones. I don't have it hooked up to title right now, just because I'm going to show the URAC and title stuff. Uh, but you know, I'm trying to trying to make the custom script that has all the things that you would want. All right, so that's sort of the that's sort of the housekeeping for today. Um, uh, let's see. So I guess I want to start with what the fuck is your rack, right? Um, and when you when you think of your rack, you think like music, like synthesizers. But your rack is sort of like um, a standard of measurement. It's uh, you think about like the metric system, right? It, there's just like a, there in in the metric system, there's uh, you know like meters and centimeters and millimeters, right? And the different different units of measurement. Um, but for your rack, we have uh, a unit of measurement called HP, which stands for horizontal pitch is a really strange uh, way to describe it. I think it was developed somewhere in Europe, so I don't... Th I, the, 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 the reason why they called it that is beyond me, but one horizontal pitch unit is a unit of length to say um, how wide a particular module is, and the module doesn't... it can be anything, right? So it's just like a, you know, a hardware, a piece of hardware that's this wide. And the height is measured in I think U, like capital U. Uh, these aren't these aren't really important to remember. It's just that um, your rack is is more of like a, a standard that people use to build modules uh, that can fit with one each other. So they're so the modules themselves are collaborating with each other um, in order to form a synthesizer uh, of your own design. And so a lot of nerds. Uh, use Eurorack because they can make and create new kinds of instruments 
and music at the same time. Um, and that's r really exciting to me. I think it's especially useful for things like sound design and other kinds of like experimental uh, topics uh, because it lets you do things that you know a keyboard, a traditional Yamaha keyboard doesn't really let you do. Um, plus you can add a Yamaha keyboard to it and there's no harm <laughs> with that. Uh, Moog has gone definitely an inch and it has taken an interesting path in the Eurorack universe. They're one of the most popular Eurorack manufacturers yet they still make the regular kind of keyboards. So there's kind of this it's kind of this dynamic. Um, so uh, before I continue, feel free to like ask any questions if you uh, need clarification or like I, I say a word that's like what was that? Uh, does that doesn't that doesn't make any sense? Uh, and that that will definitely happen because you know I have been in this field for a while and I don't I don't know what you don't know if that makes sense. Um, and so uh, any qu any questions or feedback or is is uh, helpful and great. Um, so I got into Iraq like uh, like because uh, uh, because of what I mentioned. It's it's a uh, more or less a way to create new musical instruments. Uh, good for sound design. It's good for um, sample creation. It's good for um, just exploring and creating um, without using a screen. I mean, there are screens technically with your rack, but uh, what she like better the bloops? Bloops. Uh, bloops, for sure, without a doubt. Um, Bleeps just don't cut it. I mean, I've, if I had a if I had to choose between a bleep machine and a bloop machine, definitely a bloop machine. Yeah, good shit. Um, I wonder if I have to uh, rate rate this stream as like seventeen plus because I because I'm gonna say things like shit. <laughs> we'll see. Um so the let's go ahead and switch over to the Eurorack view. Um so I have it running right now and obviously the easiest way to collaborate with someone who's doing Eurorack is with their audio output, right? You are in person and you know they're ju they're just another this they're just another uh uh player in a band, right? You know, the, you got the Eurorack guy who's making all the drums and the, that sort of thing. But with that uh, comes a lot of caveats because, like, when you try to loop, right? It's like how do you how do you connect um, a looper? Let's say you're let's say you're like a guitarist and you're like playing loops all the time, and how do you get your looper to sync with this looper? And that's it's an interesting process because um, basically someone has to be the the main clock and then someone has to be sort of the receiving clock where someone there's a central clock somewhere and that clock has to send out right the the start and stop times for the loop um, and uh, oh usually people do that with MIDI um, the so usually the solution to that but you can do it with other things too um, just to just to keep just to keep your options open yeah, uh, creature creator. That looks. It is. It is a little. It is a little complicated. Um, I have a few modules going on, and with the wires, it looks way more complicated. But uh, I'm not using most of what's here at any given moment. I'm only using very minimal amounts to just to just to do what I need. Right. So this is like an, a fully functional like synthesizer, and these are all modules that do. Um, to have different functions. Uh, Morphogene can be a looper, right? So um, it's like it's, like I said, it's you can multiple modules can can be can be the looper. Most of the time, I use tidal cycles as my looper because um, it's from my computer and I can control everything with tidal cycles. Uh, 
Morphogene can be a looper. It has that capability, but that's not its strength. And if you make the Morphogene a looper, um, you lose a lot of its original functionality. You can't do a lot of stuff with it once you've already, if you've decided the Morphogene is going to be a looper. Some people have two Morphogenes to solve this. And so one's the looper and one is sort of the sample manipulator because they like the Morphogene so much. Um, So yeah, one thing is like yeah, dealing with audio out. But another another interesting thing is, is that you can use Eurorack as a effects unit. So um, right here, uh, this module is very is very small. Uh, right now there's a, there's a cable connected to it. Um, it's got uh, only take out. So the AA1 has um, input and output for audio. So you can hook up guitar pedals to it. Uh, I've used this quite a lot when I'm trying to input like saxophone or voice or whatever. And I can take the output of a guitar pedal and I can uh, amplify that signal so that it's at synth level. So synth level is like way higher in voltage. And so you have to you have to amplify the signal to get it to where you want it to be for your rack. Um, a lot of your rack modules require you to have a much higher, a, a much higher like signal. Um, and so, yeah, what uh, uh, what that module lets you do is it like, lets you do input and output for guitar pedals. So in this in this instance, I could, you know, take my synthesizer and then run it through this, and then get a guitar pedal, uh, something, uh, a stereo output that I could then put into a guitar pedal, which th could then go into an amp, right? So it could be, it could just sort of act like another uh, effects chain in like some guitarists or s in my case, saxophonists uh, effects line, right? So, you know, it'd be great for shoegaze. So if you're really into shoegaze, you can you should consider your rack because you could really you wouldn't, be, but then again, you wouldn't be staring at your shoes, so be like table gaze. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the other input output module that I can think of, uh, and I'll get to later, is that this is the ES8, which I'm pointing to right now. Um, it has it's just input and outputs, right? So it has four inputs here, and it has eight outputs here. And basically, this just connects to my computer. It's just input and output. Form so I, if I have audio channels running from my computer or running to my computer, um, I can I can go either way. Wire watcher. That's good. <laughs> you should coin that before it gets taken. Um, a lot of this is just yeah, like uh, it's just inputs and outputs. So you, if you look at the the Moog patch bay here, we have one side which is in, and then the other side which is out. And I'll, I'll zoom in real quick, so you can see um, that it has uh, it has labels where it says in and then out. So basically, all of these ports that you can see here. They're either in ports or out ports. And I'm going to say that a lot because that's really <laughs> what the whole of this is, is that you have inputs and outputs, just like um, the uh, like a audio interface like you see here. So in the, in the an audio interface, you have four inputs so that I'm currently using my microphone on. Here's one. And the outputs are on the back of this audio interface. So just like this, the ES8 is an audio interface in that it does inputs and outputs, and that's it. Super useful, though, and super important for uh, all the kinds of things that you do with your rack. Um, so uh, I talked a little bit about guitar pedals, um, but uh, this, just to go off of that tangent, um, this module right here, the Mimeophon that I have. Um, oh yeah, this <laughs> didn't fit. <laughs> it 
<laughs> it was too big. And I too, I couldn't I couldn't screw this one in. Um as you can see. It and uh it just kind of hangs out. It's really janky. Um I didn't really think it through. And so the module is like too wide and it doesn't fit all the way into this particular case. Um oh well. That's that's the that's the way it's going to be. Um but the uh, the miniathon is more or less an effects unit. It does a uh, whole lots of stuff. It does delays, echoes, reverb, um, filtering, like all these types of things that you would see on like a guitar um, a guitar racks, right? So like all the kinds of things that you would want to do. So if I wanted to run. Uh, So if I so want to run, 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 run my voice, voice through, through this, this, this rack, 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 do, do that, 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 do uh, Reaver, the filtering, uh, the filtering, uh, and uh, and I can do a ping pong delay, uh, but I'm only on mono. So I can do a ping pong delay, delay, but I'm only on mono, so it doesn't do anything. I'm only on mono, so it doesn't do anything. Okay. Um. Hopefully that was a good, uh, a short little demonstration. Um, hopefully you can still y'all can still hear me and I'm not doing anything crazy just yet. Um, so that's that's with that. Uh, the morphogene over here, uh, really important module, and there's a lot of modules that do like similar things. Um, but it is a sample uh, like manipulator. It takes in um, it has you, there's an SD card uh, down here. And you can potentially collaborate with someone who uses uh, the morphogene by giving them samples. Right, so you record samples uh, and you put it on like an SD card, micro SD card, and then uh, you just load it up. And there you go. You have a you have a collaboration ready to go because you made the samples and then the other person is manipulating them in real time. It also has input. And then so you could like sample someone live, right? So you, you someone's playing an instrument, uh, for example, uh, for example, like let's say Emma's playing cello, and you would take that as an input, and then you would record it real quick, and then you would uh, manipulate those mani manipulate the sound in real time. Um, I can demonstrate that real quick by. Uh, So I'm using I'm using both the SD card for this and my voice using the mixer. Um, but if I wanted to record my voice like so, I'd hit record, right, and just wait a few seconds, say a few words, and then I'd move to that. Seconds, say a few words. Have the live, and then you can mix it with this uh, 
you could mix the live instrument with this like manipulation in real time. Um, and the morphogene is pretty much the whole reason I got into your rack because I don't see this too much in software where it's really easy to record someone and then uh, play them, play them back. Obviously, I'm controlling the tempo over here uh, just by tapping tempo. So I want it really slow. sounds totally different from the original voice and so it's you're basically another ensemble player but you're matching the same uh, things as the other people are doing in a way so um, yeah that's uh, a little bit into what you can do with samples uh, using using your rack there's definitely lots of options out there uh, and you can, and that was already a, a good uh, demonstration of how some of the modules can interact with each other. Because one was the clock, and then another was sort of the receiver of that clock information. Um, so, you know, if you, if someone else, yeah, let's. Uh, I guess I'm trying to think of what how else to to collaborate with someone in uh, using Morphogene. Yeah, so you either either samples or like live input. Um, so the next thing uh, to I, I wanted to mention was MIDI. So uh, if you can see here, um, I have a Moog Mother 32 and a MIDI keyboard. And the MIDI keyboard, the, uh, the this MIDI controller specific has a, has a MIDI in and out. So uh, when I play a note. Um, I, the the it receives the MIDI information, turns that into a note, and then sends that to the output. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. If I connect the output of the synthesizer um, to the to the computer, um, you'll be able to hear it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and monitor that so I can hear it myself. keyboard player but I <laughs> as you can see but uh, you get the idea it send this is all MIDI and um, the next thing uh, you'll notice is that it's using a old-fashioned MIDI cable a DIN um, five five pins and you'll be able to see uh, the connection here there are it's an analog pin, it's not digital. So when I play a note, the light turns on for note on and note off. And there are other kinds of modules in the Eurorack universe that use MIDI. Uh, it's not the only one, um, but MIDI is really useful 
for sending note information. So if you wanted to send somebody MIDI remotely, you know, you could control as a your rack player all the knobs and stuff, and someone else is playing the notes. So it's sort of like you could break it up and you could collaborate by breaking up that process where someone is sort of the sound designer where they're messing with... You're messing with the nods and the other person is um, actually playing the notes and playing melodies and that sort of thing. As long as you don't like interfere with each other, it's pretty good. Um, And, uh, you know, MIDI is, at the end of the day, just messages, so you could create, you, you remotely could create a, a MIDI file and then send that to someone who has, um, a, a, you know, a synthesizer and they would, they would play the, the, MIDI, the MIDI file live. Okay. Um. The next thing I wanted to sort of mention is um, that this computer input output, right? This is it's it's called the ES8, um, noted by uh, the ZZZ is the logo for expert sleepers. They make um, this audio interface, and what makes this interface different? from any other audio interface is that it's DC coupled. Um, and what what does that mean? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you can send it raw voltages from and to your computer. So you can send signals, like just raw, like a signal. Like I said, think of like an earthquake, right? So when you hear, when, you, when, when a seismograph reads an earthquake, it writes a signal down on paper. Think of that as um, a good analogy for what's happening with control voltage. You're controlling uh, something over time as it, as it goes. So let's say you want to write a signal that flips from on from one to zero, you know, every, every second. So it's one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Uh, that sort of, that's a signal, right? Something that switches on and off periodically. It looks like um, kind of like blocks, and you could in a, using a traditional audio interface, you could not, you wouldn't be able to uh, uh, export that signal, like a raw signal from your computer to uh, something like this. But because this is DC coupled, you could send control voltage, like just the voltage itself, like it's a circuit, to your whole um, uh, system here. So another way to collaborate with someone who does Eurorack is let's say you do electronics and you want to send someone a raw signal and that signal uh, is controlling the music. Um, it's, that's a little bit, it's a little bit more abstract than these, these other examples. Um, so maybe it would be more uh, apt to show maybe to give the example of a phone. So your phone has an accelerometer in it. You, when you move it around, it records that information. So you could potentially use your phone as a controller, right? You could move your phone around and that data of your phone moving around could be converted to a signal and that signal goes into the system. So you're basically controlling a synthesizer with your phone. Um, and this is all very like electrical engineering stuff. So, if you're if you're lost, please please tell me <laughs> because I got a degree in electrical engineering. And if there's any uh, if there's any terms that you uh, or that's kind of kind of like lost on you, um, that's probably because it, I haven't uh, talked to too many people about this sort of thing. Um, so, signals are extremely useful 
in being able to um, s control control the modules on a Euro rack. So this allows you to th incorporate things like dance, uh, gesture, uh, you know, other and other kinds of uh, uh, video, other kinds of signals that are not inherently music, but you could then convert to music. Um, <laughs> I get that. Um, that's my secret, Captain. Um, so the way that I use control voltage is with tidal cycles. Um, tidal cycles is a live coding language, um, but there was this person who wrote, I forgot his name, uh, but he wrote a GitHub library. He wrote, not GitHub library. He wrote, he wrote a quick library that lets you send control voltage from tidal to your Euro rack. Um, and so if you were to send tidal messages, it could then relay those signals to the Euro rack. So an, another way to co collaborate with someone who uses Euro rack is to uh, be a tidal cyclist, <laughs> as Alex <laughs> likes to um, call it. <laughs> so if you do tidal cycles, you could output your uh, your tidal cycles beat, or your you could give you could give someone a signal um, based on the beat that you're creating, and then send that out to a Eurorack module. Uh, there is a DAW uh, digital audio workstation um, that does control voltage, and that is called uh, Bitwig. Um, I'm gonna try to pull that up real quick uh, using the u using the browser. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see this soon. Um, you'll be able to see the browser in a minute. Okay, hopefully you can see um, the the browser now. Um, but uh, Bitwig is different than other digital audio workstations in that a lot of Eurorack pe in, in that a lot of Eurorack people use it because it allows you to uh, um, send control voltage like a raw signal, um, not audio. This is not audio. This is, is just a, a signal, right? Something that goes up and down every now and then uh, directly to your um, audio interface. And ES8 actually collaborates with Bitwig um, quite a bit because of, of this really like enhanced compa compatibility. So let's say you like made a beat, right? In, in Ableton or something, and then you exported that as a WAV file. Then you imported that to Bitwig, and you also wanted to control. You wanted to automate something in in. Uh, you wanted to automate something in your Eurorack setup. Uh, you would be able to do that completely with Bitwig, uh, and that's what what's what makes it um, a little bit different. I think there's a little bit about uh, mod uh, modular stuff. Yeah, so. They, they boast here about this um, hardware integration. So uh, it does MIDI handling, note timing. Um, able to, it, other prominent features include MIDI clock sync and Ableton link. Um, what, but where Bitwig Studio really stands out is the collection of hardware integration devices. Ableton has some CV tools, but it doesn't seem as comprehensive as Bitwig. Yeah. Um, I haven't messed with the CV tools from Ableton. I don't have Ableton. I think Bitwig is a lot. You can try it out in demo mode. Um, I know Ableton Lite exists, but <laughs> um, Bitwig exists for Linux. So, hey, <laughs> I used it on my Raspberry Pi, or at least I tried to. Um, so that's enough about.
let's let's take a look here. Okay, so now we are. It looks like we should be back. Um, okay, so uh, please send a message if you're if you're still here, <laughs> and uh, you got through the OBS just crack does absolutely crashing on my computer. Um, so the next really cool thing that I wanted to talk about that I don't have that I really, really want to get into, this is like what's going to break the bank for me, is um, video synthesizers. So uh, what is sort of coming out, and this is like a really, uh, very much a newer thing, is is that um, there are some analog video synthesizers uh, taking uh, being created as uh, Eurac modules, and you know what does that what does that look like? Uh, well, there's a few companies that do it. Um, uh, one is LZX Industries. And they have uh, a couple modules out there. One is the Crobagnet. As you can see, it's very expensive, um, but it does exist. And there will be more Eurorack people who you start are, are going to be using video. And this is Control AV, so um, we got to have some video component here at some point. So there are multiple ways you can collaborate with someone using one of these. Um, as you can see. Uh, it's got uh, a laser laser projector input and output. Um, it's got RGB. It's got X and Y. Uh, it's got motion. It's got all all sorts of things. It's got like analog video ins and outs. Um, very interesting stuff. And they've got uh, something that's not specifically Eurorack, but it's like a media player uh, built for like video art, stage production, video wall, signage, and other applications. Really cool stuff. I kind of want one. Um, it's, yeah, it's got HDMI, composite video, and analog audio output. Super cool stuff. The other uh, video modular synthesizer um, for your, your, in Eurorack is one built by Erogenous Tones. Um, and they've got a module called Structure, which basically does a very something very similar. Where, um, hold on, it does something very similar. Where uh, you can, it has an in of a video RGB, and uh, you've got your audio and CV. And there is a, a joystick down at the bottom, which lets you control other things. It's also got a CVBS output. I'm not exactly sure what that is right now. Um, have I heard of Sleepy Circuits Hypno? No, I haven't. What is that? Um, I guess the delay is pretty pretty long. Still, <laughs> gotta work on that one. Um, but it does have a really cool display here, and then you can control different parts of the display. Um, and it's got USB, which I'm not really sure what this USB port does. It's like a starter tier video synth in Eurorack. Oh. Okay. I I no I had I hadn't heard of that. But basically, uh, Eurorack is is the, is the new kid on the block when it comes to uh, doing using electronics for audiovisual stuff. So you don't where you don't have to particularly use your computer. Uh, a lot of people are coming out with new different kinds of things where you use knobs um, instead of like having to type and use like these like ridiculous softwares and having to upgrade your computer every couple years and it's just sort of these things last so long 
Um, and there's a million ways to collaborate with uh, people who use these things. Oh, maybe I, maybe I have run across this before, but it's been a while. Yeah, this is really cool. As you can see, um, it can take video input, and then it it does it's it, it's it behaves like an effects unit, right? So you can generate video, or you can add things to an existing video. Um, really cool, really interesting stuff. Um, the other. Th Um, the other th the other thing I, w I wrote down, but I'm probably not going to go over, is VCV rack. It's not really important for collaborations because you kind of have to be already be into your rack to, to be interested in VCV rack because it's just kind of like a software that you use as your rack, so not really important. Um, another thing that I've done with my friend Rick, who's a drummer, is working with um, contact mics. And uh, a contact mic so you can, you, they're really cheap on Amazon. Like, holy shit. Uh, I didn't realize this beforehand, but you can get you can get a couple of them for like 10 bucks. But what we did was we took some contact mics and attached them to buckets. And uh, I wish I had a picture of this, um, but he has a bunch of buckets now. And he, he, he currently has the contact mics attached to his sample pad. So when he hits a sample, it trigger or when he hits the bucket, it triggers a sample. But you can configure that with Eurorack um, in a way that's really interesting. So um, there's a few artists that I can think of that do this sort of thing. Um, one is Merlin. I forgot how to spell his last name. Um, Oh, that's the one. It's the, it's the one on Fact Magazine. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's really it's really obscure. But uh, basically, he he has this Eurorack setup, and he's a drummer, and he probably uses contact mics and microphones, and he manipulates his sound and triggers sounds and does all these really interesting things all at the same time. And it's obviously he's got a laptop over here, and he's got his modular over here. Um, and if you've ever listened to any of these things, it's really interesting. Uh, he, he's 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 doing things that you've never heard of or will will hear <laughs> for a while. It's really out there. Um, the kinds of collaborations you can have between a Eurorack system and like regular regular old instruments. Very exciting stuff. Um, And so, uh, hopefully you can hear this. Uh, and I hope that, yeah. I might have to cut it off in a bit. Yeah, uh, I pr probably uh, have to cut that off for copyright reasons in a minute because I can't stream things that are protected by copyright. So, um, and for the last for the last little bit, I think I'm just going to sort of demo uh, the I'm going to at least try to demo the um, the title cycles and um, Eurorack stuff real quick and just just kind of mess around for a little bit for the rest of the stream. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you have any ideas on how you would like to collaborate with your rack or like, hey, is this possible? Like, you know, chances are it probably is. <laughs> so um, that should that should wrap things up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, get Super Collider booted uh, so I can work with Tidal. Super, lark, super Collider can be so annoying sometimes. It's like so picky. And then it's like, I'm not gonna tell you what's wrong. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna work. Um right now it's just sort of saying 
localhost is already booting and then it's doing some weird stuff. Um, I wish I could just, oh, it, that's the wrong one. Localhost already booting. Let's try exiting out of that and restarting it. I'm having some uh, I'm having some weird um, issues with uh, streaming my audio setup from the URAC to uh, Twitch, and then also booting Super Collider at the same time. Um, I'm not sure which which if I should do one first or not. Okay, for some reason that worked. I don't know why. So now, now I'm live there. Let's see if we can uh, get title running. Does each of the aux LFOs run on the same central clock? Can I take it? Take can, I, can it take uh, external clock? Um, yes, it's all running on the same clock. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. Uh, let's let's switch over to that real quick. So uh, the rate here, I didn't really go over this module at all, but it's an interesting module. It's kind of like a utility. Um, it has one clock. So if I have it on the slowest, you can see everything's moving really slow. Like everything's moving really slow, but they're sort of like out of sync with each other. So that you know when I move it up. You can see they're all moving at different rates, but they're all they're going to uh, they all kind of respond to this central CV trigger, and there's a CV in, so you could control the master, or uh, not master the central clock here, and you could yeah. So is you have something that's really fast on the top, and then the slowest one is at the bottom. But they're all controlled by a single knob. So really, really straightforward if you want to make like ambient kind of music, so things are happening at different rates. And now, let's try to um, get title working. I upgraded to title 1.7.2 and that was like giving me some issues so I hope I hope this works um, if it doesn't I might have to call it a night because <laughs> troubleshooting super collider is uh, uh oh super collider is giving me some issues it says um, hopefully you can see this it's kind of at the bottom here um, it says localhost disconnected shared memory interface. What if I try uh, rebooting uh, title? Maybe I'll be able to get something now. There's a lot of setup going on here. Still not getting audio output quite yet. Um, should take a second. Oh, geez, that's not that's not fun. Sim sample SN couldn't be found. Ugh. All right. Let's give this another shot. Oh boy. One more time. I'm 
when there's so many moving parts, uh, a lot of the there's a lot of points of you also have a lot of points of failure. So if like one thing's not working, it kind of messes up the whole thing. Um, so it seems oh okay. So uh, it's kind of hard to see, but now title is output from the my uh, the, these LEDs light up because there's output coming from title. Um, and I did want to show uh, title voltage real quick because it really it's an interesting um, set of code for those who are interested. I'm only going to show it briefly. Don't worry. Um, I'm going to switch over to uh, looking at Adam. So hopefully you can see that um, over on over on this end, uh, we've got the this is the title code that you have to run in order to run the voltage. Um, so I have to I run this, and I will be able to send raw voltage uh, through my audio interface. And so the examples that I have. Um, that should be sending raw voltage. Not seeing any errors. Usually, I have to specify. Oh, I might have I might have uh, specified uh, the wrong number of outputs on Super Collider. So, although I did, um, oh, it says it can't find voltage. But I did run this. Um, hmm. Well, there seems to be something going on. From, from this working, um, so what I what I will uh, demonstrate real quick is the title. Put it running the title from the title drum beat that I'm playing right now uh, into the stream, so you can hear it. Okay, let's give this a shot. Hopefully you can hear me now. So now I have the title running. Okay, so now you can see that I'm running title cycles and it's uh, running through the Euro rack and back again. Um, For some reason, the voltage is not currently working. Um, might have to go and debug that. Oh, I know why. It's because I upgraded title, and I need to add some custom synths to the Super Dirt so that it can work. But um, that was only because I updated to the newest version and didn't uh, include voltage in that update. So on red beat, which I will do very quickly.
let's kick this up a notch. Here's a quick demo of, um, I'm running the title cycles beat through a Eurorack module and then I'm sending that back to the computer. Just kind of a quick and, quick and dry kind of thing. So, you know, I can turn knobs and all of a sudden my title cycles beat is doing all sorts of things that the title cannot do. But just the turn of a knob is the head of the live code. Really fun stuff. Okay. So that about concludes it for the evening. I um, hope everyone had a good time. See y'all next week.